So today, we are going to learn how to complete the square so that we can make a trinomial a perfect square. All right, And then we're going to write our final answer in factored form. So this is a trinomial. It has three terms, and it has a power of 2 on the x. What we're trying to do is figure out the third term, so this is a perfect square. Now, what you have to know is there's a little formula for figuring out that third term. What you do is you take the number next to x, and we divide it by 2 and square that answer. And that will get us that last term. All right. So in this case, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So we know that this third term is 36. Now, how is that helpful? Well, by putting a 36 there, we've made this a perfect square, meaning we can write this as something squared. Now, the question is, what is that something squared? Well, it's always going to be x in here. And there's going to be a number added or subtracted at the end of x. All right. So to figure out what that number is, there's two ways to do that. You can take the number next to x and divide it by 2, which would be 6. So this is plus 6. Or you could take the number on the end that you just found and square root it. They should both get you the same number, 30, uh, in this case, 6. All right. So x plus 6 squared is the factored form. And this proves that this is a perfect square. Now, if you're not sure that that actually works, that this actually is this, you can always multiply this out and test it for yourself. right? So x plus 6 squared means x plus 6 times x plus 6. And if we multiply this out, x times x is x squared. x times 6 is 6x. 6 times x is 6x. And 6 times 6 is 36. And if I combine my like terms, you'll see that this is 12x. So we have x squared plus 12x plus 36. There you go. OK? Let's do another one so you can see this in action one more time. All right. So y equals x squared minus 8x plus something. Now notice, the number next to x in this case is negative 8. But that doesn't change the formula. We take that number, negative 8, divide it by 2, and then square it. And notice, because we square it, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's always going to come out positive. Okay, So that's going to get us our third term. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So that's a plus 16 there. All right, so now we have a perfect square. To get in factored form, we will figure out what it is that makes this a perfect square. So I always stick x there. Now, what's the number that goes on the end? Now, like I told you before, there's two ways to find that. We can take this number and divide by 2, or take this number and square root it. You should get the same answer. But notice something interesting here. If we take negative 8 and divide it by 2, we get negative 4. The square root of 16 is positive 4. But wait a minute. Remember, the square root of 16 could also be negative 4 because negative 4 times itself also equals 16. So when you take the square root of these numbers, don't forget there's a positive and a negative answer. All right, And you're going to take the one that matches up with this number divided by 2. In this case, negative 4 makes the most sense. So x minus 4 squared is this in factored form. And again, if you're not sure and you want to double check, you can do x minus 4 times itself and double check x times x, x squared. x times negative 4, negative 4x. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. And of course, once you combine your x's, you'll have x squared, you'll have minus 8x, and you'll have plus 16. So we know this is OK. All right, so let's do one more. Here we go x squared minus 24x plus what will make this a perfect square? Well, again, let's use our formula. We'll take the number next to x, divide it by 2, and then square it. And that should get us that third term. Negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. So there is our third term. So this should be a perfect square. So we should be able to write it like this. Well, how
how do we know it goes in here? Well, we know it's always an x. Now, the other number, we either take negative 24 and divide it by 2, which is negative 12, or the square root of 144, which could also be negative 12. So, there we go. Minus 12. X minus 12. And for the last time, we might as well check it since we checked all the other ones, just to make sure that X minus 12 squared really does equal this. X times X is X squared. X times negative 12 is negative 12X. Negative 12 times X is negative 12X. And negative 12 times negative 12 is 144. If we combine our like terms, we will end up with X squared minus 24X plus 144. That works. Okay? So this method of completing the square is very helpful because it allows us to come up with a perfect squared trinomial. And then we can easily factor it into this format, which we are going to use when we start graphing parabolas. All right? So hopefully this video helped you. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck in your math, and I will see you next time.